she's blown up. Think about just laying a fucking hammer to it this time. I it's think I might have fucked something up. Be honest with you. Seriously? Yeah. Was it? What is it ticking? Or like what? What's just popping? I rolled in it. It's like, <laughs> and I heard something banging off the ground, like something fell off or something. I'm like, what the fuck? And then I turn on the return road. Feels fine. I'm like. What's going on? Smack it on the ass a little bit. Listen, dude, it's a little bit of act right. As soon as the power, came, dude, it left soft. I was like, okay, it's gonna give me A to B. I might have something to work with. As soon as the boost came in, it just fucking yeah. Mine went slow, but it went. What did it run? 592. Give you something to work with. Yeah, I'm gonna give it another fucking six pound boost and 300 RPM. Yeah, we're gonna run it this time. Where's my rear end? No. Piston's gone. <laughs> Are you serious? Whoa! Holy crap! Damn! The head's fucked on this side. Oh my god! Yeah, she ain't coming back to life. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. 
Styled in clean room engine. Oh, I'm zoomed in. They can't see how disgusting. start over so you can see everything no <laughs> really come on I gotta go to bed dude welcome to my clean engine building room as you can tell I'm super organized and very clean but I'm on my last piston and I figured I'd just show you guys real quick how to jam one of these suckers in there mm. and I was told by a professional how to do this so I can't screw it up right um, so, here's the deal, uh, you want to gap these suckers, I've been lucky, I've only had to gap a couple, I don't know if it's because it took so much to clean out the bores, or what, but I really haven't had to gap too many. I was going to go for 28 on the first ring and 30 on the second, that's a pretty popular gap to shoot for. But I had a couple first rings out of the package that were already 30. So I was like, eh, I'll just make them all the same. Do 30 all the way around. So I grabbed my top ring. And you just kind of squeeze it together. Give me a sec. Okay. Just kind of squeeze it together and push it in there where it gets started. And then you grab a piston and you just push it down there to where it looks like it's level all the way around. That way it gets, when you measure it, you're actually measuring it flat and even. And get you some filler gauges. I got 26, 28, and 30. Okay. And you just stick it in the gap, see if it fits. 28 fits, or no, that's 26. 28 fits. I'm going to 30. 30 fits real tight, so I'm not going to gap that one. I'm going to show you guys what I got now. I got this little tool. I'll forget how much it was, but you get on Amazon a uh, ring filer. Touch them together, make sure they're kind of flat and even. Yes. Just turn it for a little bit. And that probably took a thousandth off. Just that little bit. It's pretty aggressive. And then you just test it again, measure it, see where it's at, and go from there. 30. Easy. That's probably a little more than 30, but obviously I can't go any tighter, so it is what it is, and we're just going to run it. Put your uh, oil expanding ring on there. I think it's called. And you want to set, you want to make sure all these rings, the opens are offset. The dots on these pistons, the dots are supposed to face forward on the motor. So I'm using that to know where to clock everything. You don't really need any special tools or nothing. You just kind of walk them around. And then you grab your second ring. Sure. And on this particular ring set, and it tells you in the directions that there's a little indention. Okay. And that means that that goes towards the top. Some rings are directional, some aren't. Like the second ring is directional, the top ring is not directional. Then I'm just going to put this second ring pointed that way, the top ring pointed that way, and that's how they wanted the directions put them in there I always spin them make sure they're not sticking anywhere you definitely don't want them sticking and if you have an old old uh, piston that's all gummed up with carbon and stuff you're gonna have to clean out the uh, where the rings go because that ring has to be able to move freely They go up to five inch, and I just cut off the the extra that I don't need. Where'd you get it from? Uh, oh, Riley's. Yeah. 
It's like 20 bucks. Probably put way too much on there, but I figured I don't want it to dry start on it. I dropped my heads off to get resurfaced. That's all I that's all I wanted done was resurfaced. But the the guy that works there's he's really knowledgeable. He's been around the block. He knows a thing or two. He's not just a regular, you know, just slap together whatever plain Jane motors. Like he he knows about the turbo stuff. He's built some pretty good motors. Anyways, he's like, well, I want to check your valves real quick before you leave. You know, make sure they're sealing up nice. And all my exhaust valves were leaking, but they cleaned up fine. All my intake valves were leaking. Only two would clean up. The other ones, he, he had to take off so much material that they were paper thin. So luckily, you know, me along with every other LS guy in the world, I had a bunch of random valves and extra heads laying around, so I just took him everything I had and he found a found enough valves to make work. And he went ahead and did me a valve job and everything. So I think that's pretty crazy, honestly. That, <laughs> that they were that bad. And the sucker made eleven hundred horsepower. With a bent rod. And it had a bent rod, which I don't think I explained that to you guys yet, but we came to the conclusion between some knowledgeable people and myself that but uh You didn't have a class clap lifter. That when I when the thing was making noise three months ago, that it was probably me bending a rod. I did that before my Camaro years ago when I first got into this stuff. It was ticking, I thought it was a lifter, and it was a bent rod. <clears throat> and Brandon, super smart guy, works at a machine shop. He's the one doing the machine work on this block. He's he told me he's man, I bet you you bent that rod, and then it clearance itself out, then it bent some more, clearance it's cause it would, it would tick off and on. And I was just like, man, that lifter's goofy. I'll replace him eventually. And we went to the track and it was getting louder and then sure enough it came apart so it kind of makes me feel better that that's the reason why my car took so much boost to make any power having a bent rod and shitty valves and it just being a big ass pile of shit yeah which I knew was worn out everyone knew it was worn out I mean everyone that knew the car knew that it was worn out but you know, we didn't do. We just didn't know how how worn out. But so now you know, I got more cubes, and the sucker is going to be uh, nice and sealed up like it's supposed to. So it should it should perform a lot better. I hope. I'm changing the oil real quick. Uh, new motor, whatever. Change the oil. I got a bunch of stuff to do. Testing starts in three hours. I'd like to make it there on time if I can. Whatever. I'm putting coilover sleeves on my strange struts on the front. Put some bar angle in it. Put my diaper on. And then I should be good to go. So we'll see if how much it fights me. It's been fighting me this whole time. So. So you're gonna make it on time. I'd like to. One twenty-five, sixty foot. That's the best hair I ever got, ever. Five fifty-three at one twenty-five. That was on 
No not, power. No power. No power. Dude. All front half. How'd it feel? Dude, it felt amazing. The front half, I had shifted into high gear. I was like, man, I go get some ice cream. <laughs> Was that a wheelie? Yep. I felt it come come up get light and I was like, is this yeah, a wheelie? This feels cool. I'm like, I wonder if that's a wheelie. I know it went. Good job, dude. Fuck yeah, motherfucker.